please. So, that, might <laughs> that might help. Well, as usual, a warm welcome to everyone who's attending our Thursday Travels to Country Offices. And today we are going to be in Nairobi, but not quite my Nairobi. I don't know if Bertha will tell you where she is. But anyway, she is in Kenya. And a warm welcome to our champion, Bertha, uh, who will tell us what life is like uh, in, the, in, in Nairobi if you were relocating there. And actually, we have had a lot of feedback to say that this Thursday Travels is both enjoyable and informative. And it also supports the bank's decentralization agenda. So by coming here, you sort of, it's almost like going to a buffet and you can get a taste of what it's like. And you can meet people from the chapter. You can meet people who have lived there before and uh, just generally uh, give you the feel of, of what it could be like. So we like to think of it as the inside track. And this is where you can get the answers to questions like what is the acceptable dress code if I have a teenager, uh, you know, how safe it is, can I walk out at night, all those sorts of questions from people uh, just like yourselves really. So uh, as usual, it's a chat. Uh, I will be watching the chat box so you can either unmute yourself or you can uh, put your question in the chat box and I will uh, ask Bertha uh, to answer those questions. So, Martha, maybe if you can begin and just give us a, a realistic picture of a day in the life of someone living in Nairobi, not someone, a WBG spouse living in Nairobi. So, over to you. Hi, Yvonne. Uh, I'm getting bad signal right now. And this is Bertha. I'm speaking to you from Nairobi. No, 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 not from Nairobi. I am currently in Mombasa. Um, me and my family came here for a small vacation just to enjoy the scenery and the good weather. The signal is quite terrible. I don't know how come, but anyway, I hope you'll be able to hear from me. Can you uh, hear me? We can, we can hear you very well. Uh, I think it's to leave off the video if the signal is low, yes. as long as we can hear yes. you. Great, great. Actually, I turned off the video. Yes. Uh, so do you want me to go ahead and speak a little bit more about uh, Kenya? Yes. yes, please do. The floor is yours. Uh, so we moved into Kenya some four years back, uh, uh, directly from D.C. Uh, we've been here so four years. It's been a wonderful experience i am originally from zambia which is not here but pairing my country to what we have here in kenya is a whole different a wonderful very good uh friendly people easy to get on with um kind people very helpful so it's not it's not a very environment to live in it's very friendly so far so good so i'll talk about kenya in general as you kenya is in east africa off the coast of the indian ocean it's uh, got boundaries with ethiopia Somalia, on the tanzania on the south uganda on the worst and south sudan And the population uh, in Kenya in total is almost like 60 million people. Uh, so the, the biggest population of, or the ethics of the people are all diverse. It's all kinds of people who are, in, uh, who are living in Nairobi currently. The main languages in uh, Kenya is English and Swahili easy to get by as long as you've got your English uh, speaking going on very well you won't have any problems with that in terms of uh, like currently with 
experience some uh pretty much we may call them petty they are not as big bags uh, on the street but just to grab a bag no major criminal kind of uh, effect just a person who's looking for something to get by so the there are small young guys on motor a lot of people here in Kenya they use motorbikes as a form so uh, the guys on the motorbikes are the ones attacking people who are walking and they attack them for a phone or a bag, pretty much that. Uh, in terms of big crime, yes, we, uh, terrorism, which there has been aware of, but the country is much more cautious. In your way, you walk into a church, walk into a mall, you have to be thoroughly checked. Uh, sorry, checked with uh, starting from your bag. They look through or all safe uh, to be in a in a in a crowded place. So, in terms of security, really, the government is on top of it to make sure it is safe because of the terrorism that they have actually. Uh, they have experience in the past. Yeah, so uh, other crimes which, yeah? No, no, I was saying is that's good to know that they are on top of and learn from the incident before in the Westgate Mall. Yes, yes, yes. And we had another one, I think two years back at some, uh, uh, um, uh, what was that? It was a, an office building. We had another one two years back in an office building in Nairobi. So those instances, the government is really, really on top of in terms of uh, in terms of having having to make sure that the security in system to the of they are on top of it. Yeah, and then um, violent crimes. Hijacking, mugging, home inv invasion, kennel car from time to time is not anything um, that gives you a headache or that's going to put you in a panic mold because uh, for families who are coming into Nairobi or into Kenya uh, under the World Bank, they are in special areas which the bank. Uh, Uh, can you can you tell how, can you tell us a bit more about yeah no i was going to say could you tell us a little bit about how we go about finding a, a, a housing if you were relocating to kenya uh, to nairobi okay. rather uh, okay. because you said about the neighborhoods and bank staff are not allowed to live anywhere but certain neighborhoods so what is your recommendations i mean there's okay. quite a lot of choice I, I i know because i've been to nairobi yes 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 wild range um so there's a guy who is at the bank and he is specifically assigned homes families who are moving into kenya into nairobi rather and he knows which areas, which residential areas uh, uh, comply with what the, what the bank wants. So this guy will be able to take you around the homes which are vacant for you to see as you come. What a guy is like. So this guy will be able you're, to take you you're free, you're free your pre-assignment exactly so there's a gentleman so who a, is mm -hmm. this guy you were just starting to tell us who is assigned mm. by the bank is he a bank staff mm. of or is he the yes. destination service provider i think he, he's a bank staff ah i see so you don't use destination service providers in in kenya no, 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 no. There is a bank staff guy 
who is assigned specifically for you to help people who are coming in find a proper proper residence in the accustomed and assigned areas in Nairobi because the bank will not allow you to live in each and every neighborhood. I guess they've assessed to see which neighborhoods are safer. So then those are the recommended neighborhoods for you to move in. I see. So if you yeah. had to choose, what would you advise that? I mean, obviously the neighborhoods are not identical. So what would okay. be your advice to, you know, pros and cons? Okay, the so the, the pros, uh, for those of or those of you who are moving into Nairobi, it also depends on the schools for your kids. I was going to get to the schools. Um, okay. Maybe you want to do the school as crazy the school with housing. Right. Yes. So, uh, if you want your children to go into an American kind of uh, school syllabus, there's the uh, the Kenya inter or the uh, the international school in Kenya, which has the American uh, curriculum. And there's a Roslyn, which is also an American curriculum school setup. So these schools are pretty much in one area, which is called Muthaika. And Muthaika is one of the areas which are, yeah, which are recommended by the bank. So if you are in Muthaika, that's a good area. If you are in Lavington, that's a good area. Uh, I think another area is Runda. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, so those uh, those three areas, Muthaika, Lavington, Runda, are, um, are the major uh, re like residential areas where the bank will be like, yes, if you get a house there, no problem these neighborhoods i guess the guy has to assess and see you may have to have extra security you may have to have dogs maybe you may have to have security guards at the house you may need to have an electric wall fence uh, you know stuff like that just like extra security especially if you're living outside these recommended neighborhoods yeah mm -hmm. which so, is the neighborhood near, near the un club the you new know, the okay, UN everybody. club it's Muthaika. Ah, okay. Muthaika and Runda. So so do you recommend people do people still use that as a facility? Yes, yes, yes. Even the bank staff still use the UN facilities. Ooh still use the, the club, still use the commissary where we get good wines at a discounted <laughs> price, where we get nice perfumes, uh, you know, yeah. So the commissary is still on and the bank staff and spouses are all, and their kids can go even to the club. There's the swimming pool, the tennis court, there's a football pit, there's a, a basketball pit, so much activities around the UN which we all have access to very nice place to go to heated mm. pool actually not just the pool <laughs> oh my things have improved yes. <laughs> yes 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 wonderful place to hang out with the family Can't nice breakfast good food is still served there so we still have that access which is a very good for the world bank staff and 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 there's families too yeah and so what would you say about the schooling? What would be the advice if you were, were relocating? What, what, uh, do they have the I IBC system there? You mentioned the U.S. system. Do they have the IBC yes. system? Yes. Yes. So American system has still the IB. So you can still do the IB system for the kids on what you want. You can still do the SAT. They still provide that at the America at the, the international school in Kenya. Uh, you can do the British system. There are a lot of great, great British uh, system schools uh, here, both boarding and non and and day school, um, boys and you know uh, co-education. Or if you want your kids to go into boarding, 
The British schools, it's a wild variety, a lot of them. So it depends on how you want your, uh, where you want your kids to be. And it's both uh, high school, secondary school, and, and middle school, elementary school, everything, everybody is all catered for. You have a <laughs> wide choice, especially. Mm -hmm. What do most WBG families uh, choose? They choose the, the, the International School of Kenya. Okay. Yeah, that's what they choose. That's like, it's like the top end school in Kenya. Great facilities, wonderful, excellent. The International School and, and, of Kenya. And your children go to this school, I assume? Uh, my daughter, because when we moved, she was already mm -hmm. in 11th grade. Uh, so we took her to that school so she could finish her high school. And uh, mm -hmm. right now she's in, she's in college, she's in Toronto. But our son uh -huh. was much younger. And uh, I don't want to sound quite biased. It's just that mm -hmm. my son has had uh, challenges in academics. So we thought okay. if we took him to uh, an American school, uh, he will really slack. So we moved him and we put him in a British school because we wanted him, uh, you know, some kind of like focus and, you know, just being stable. Discipline. Thank you. Yes. He needed that discipline. So when we moved here, he was like in uh, sixth grade. So at least we were able to move him into a British school and he struggled actually. He did struggle like for a whole year to uh, uh, customize with the British system. But now he's been there, he's now in secondary school, he's now in like in high school, he, he's okay now, he's okay. So at least because he was younger, it was easy for us to move him and get him into some kind of like discipline. Our daughter went to the International School of Kenya. That's where she finished high, uh, um, her high school. So, yes. How did you manage the traffic situation then? How did you manage to do what, sorry? The traffic, because the kids were at two oh, different schools. So actually, this is the dynamics. We live, we didn't live in, oh, we don't live in Mutaika or Runda. We live in Lavington, and uh, the okay. reason we live there is because my son's school is in a different direction. So my son's school is in Hillcrest. Hillcrest is like Karen, a whole different direction. My daughter's school was in uh, ISK, Mutaifa area, and then the father mm -hmm. goes to Upper Hill, where the office was when they were still using the offices. So we were like in the center. Um, and the goodness is every school has the provision for a school bus and they can pick the kids from the house. Either the, okay. the international school or the British schools, they all have school buses and they'll pick up your kids. You decide, do you want to take them like at a central place, maybe like at a gas station? Can they be picked up from there or do you want to have your kids picked up from the doorstep, which is obviously an extra cost, but it's more convenient for you. And, you know, even just for a peace of mind, you're better off having the bus come to your gate and pick up your kids. So that's what we had. So in terms of how we handle the traffic, uh, mm -hmm. the school buses have helped us. We've lived here in Kenya actually four years. We don't even have a car just because we've decided no we're okay even without a car we can get by and we've got it by without having so the kids the, the transport system the school buses come pick them up in terms of public transport uber very affordable very efficient so really even having a car for us was like we don't need a car we can get by with the uber and and with the school buses coming to pick up the kids yeah so how, how do you get down to Mombasa, may I ask then? <laughs> <laughs> so from Mombasa, you can fly, but we ah. decided not to fly. Yes, we decided not to fly because we wanted to see other cities as we drive from uh, Nairobi, and so we hired a car. 
So you can ah, hire okay. a car. You can hire a car with a driver. It all depends on what you want. Uh, the setup here is pretty much friendly. Very, very friendly. You can get anything. Everything is just easily accessible. Yeah, that's the goodness with Nairobi. You can get anything and everything done. Yeah. And uh, what do you think then? Uh, I have two questions here. So it's two questions. The yes. first one is how, how active is the WBGFN community in Nairobi? And mm -hmm. the second one is my question. What is the best thing about living in, in Kenya, uh, in Nairobi? In Nairobi. Okay. So the community, the WB uh, community, now ever since we got into COVID, it has really like being very quiet. It's it's kind of like totally shut down, really. Uh, before mm -hmm. the COVID, we we used to have um, these meetings. We used to go in each other's homes uh, for tea uh for talks you know just basic talks uh so for example uh depending on what you do what you want to share you know so we would go into each other's homes this month we are in this home we are served tea and we just get together and hear ideas on what's going on with what uh the challenge that we've had here is that so many spouses can't work uh mm -hmm. reason being that it is not easy for uh, for non-residents or non-Kenyans to get work permit, and the bank does not assist uh, with helping the spouses to get work permits. So, if you get a job, you know, if you're able to get a job here in Kenya, it will have to be your employers to do that work permit on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, yes. it, the, the bank, yes, the bank is not involved at all. So, but then even for you to get that job and for you to get the employers and file the work permit for you, it is not, it's not easy at all. Yeah, it's quite yes, tough. Because, is it correct? You have to prove that yes. the, um, uh, you are not taking a job away from a Kenyan, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. You have to prove that they can't find a local or they can't find. And that's how come they're giving you the job. So that's really a huge, huge uh, challenge in terms of uh, uh, spouses yeah. here in Kenya. But uh, a lot of the spouses get into volunteering, get yes. to do a lot of. Yeah, I got to do a lot of volunteering. I met uh, one of her spouses who is, um, she was volunteering at one of the universities because she had told us that uh, with, her, with her doctorate, she needed to be, she, she's a scientist. So she needed to mm -hmm. be in the lab for certain hours. If she exceeds mm -hmm. uh, like absence from those hours, then she uh, forfeits something like that. Her license, yes. Her license is a, she forfeits it. So to get her going with her, with her uh, working in the lab, she volunteered to, I think she was working at the Kenyatta University here in, uh, in Nairobi. So she was volunteering mm -hmm. as a lecturer. So most of the spouses. So, mm -hmm. When you volunteer, do you need no. a work permit or not? No, no, you no. don't need so it. So you can just, so you're free to volunteer uh, anywhere for, as long as it's voluntary, correct? Exactly, exactly, yes. Uh, and, and I know that you mentioned that some spouses, although they're not with WBG, uh, yes. they, start their own they start their own businesses? Yes, yes, they do. So and, and you and that, and that, that, doesn't re, that doesn't require a work permit then if you start your own business. No, 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 it doesn't. All you need to do is just register with what you're doing. So the uh -huh. authority people here in Kenya should be able to track your business. And as long as you pay your taxes, that, that's it. That's it. 
if you're starting a business, it's not a big deal. That's okay. Oh. Ah, so it's the land for it then. That's the land for entrepreneurship. Both are you there? Oops. I think we've lost connection. Yeah, we'll wait for her to but come back. Yeah, I think so. We lost we 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 we, we lost connection. But in the uh, meantime, Myra, I will ask Yeah, I will ask I will answer your question, Myra, as soon as we get her back. I, I have my eye on the chat box. Uh, while we wait for uh, Bertha to come back, is anyone in the audience from Kenya or who has been to Nairobi and would like to share while we wait for our connection with Bertha? If you know Nairobi, you've uh, visited, uh, please share. Or if you're Kenyan, we would really welcome your cultural input. So please just unmute and... Uh, Share your thoughts. <clears throat> Is there any... I think uh, while Bertha comes back, we can all. Well, I, I see she's back. Bertha? Can we hear you? She's here, but we I think we can't hear her. She's been here. Until then, we can turn oh, our, our cameras. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems uh, that it's very uh, easy to volunteer and uh, get authorization, which is actually very good. I find that, um, you know, if you're unable to work, uh, there are other options available. Yes, I, 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 I think really, Sarah, the answer is to know this ahead of time so that in terms of career management, you can plan that you know you are not going to be able to work. So what can you do? So I think that is really important information. So people going into Kenya, you know, like this lady who's managed to volunteer and still yeah. continue to keep her, her licenses up and things. So I do think it's important. I mean, I have been to uh, Nairobi uh, more than once, actually. And I think one of the most wonderful, wonderful things about Nairobi is the access to the Masai Mara, where you can see all the uh, animals, yeah, and there's and the beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, scenery, mm -hmm. and 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 safaris. You know, seeing the wild, the wild, the wild beasts walk across the Mara to the Serengeti is really out of it's spectacular. And the traffic is it is very really rough. <laughs> uh, that's that's if, for sure. I I can. Oh, yes, um, I, I was lucky enough to to visit Nairobi when we lived in Tanzania. And um, going from Tanzania, uh, what struck me was that it, it's so much cooler than Dar es Salaam. The climate is, is it was really nice. I mean, you could walk around and feel, feel comfortable. I, it might have been the time of the year we went, I don't know. Um, and, and something which um, uh, to know about the international schools, if your child is in an international school and is a, and is a good sports player and gets into a school team, they have the leagues of uh, inter-school leagues so the children go uh, to another country they, they bring the children the, from five or six countries they come together to have um you know championship so we actually went to support our school uh, in a team um from tanzania so it's, it's, that's just something to know if you have a child who's in an international school who's a sportsman or woman thank you It'll also be interesting to know, you know, what is a good time to visit as a, you know, even if uh, as a tourist, because you mentioned that uh, it was cooler and the weather was nice. The um, weather is always, it is, uh, Nairobi is up in the, uh, you know, it's not on sea level. And one of the greatest things in Nairobi, the climate is absolutely wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. And it's so green, uh, if you're going really green. Yeah. 
if you're good uh, uh buffer can we hear can you yes. hear us oh yes, wonderful yes, you're back. yes oh good you're you're so what to resume our conversation then uh what is a great what's the best thing about living in kenya i think that was the question we asked you and you cut out on that high note <laughs> ah, the weather <laughs> nothing beats the weather in kenya as a whole the weather is beautiful the weather is amazing number one the weather number two so many places to go to uh so mm -hmm. many places to visit uh in terms of garden parks to see the animals in terms of uh fun places be it in nairobi be it outside nairobi wonderful places to to visit yeah here in mombasa great place you go to the mara you go to to uh to, what is that Cadelgo something everywhere it's 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 just so many wonderful places to visit uh second thing people kenyans are accommodating i guess they realize that they have a, a diverse kind of uh, population and so they embrace it doesn't matter who you are they are just warm and you know they'll make you feel comfortable that's the thing so it starts from it starts even from people who have cars people have spoken to the drivers you know house help everybody is just warm and 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 just welcoming and if they know you're even a foreigner they go out of their way just to make you feel comfortable that's something that's really amazing uh what i have noticed being here in kenya yeah so talk, talking about the household help drivers and uh, home help and things what is your advice yeah. to families who, who, who are moving to kenya uh, how do you go about you finding your household help okay it's best to use people who are already here so for example families which are moving in uh, good to always get a recommendation from somebody who is in the bank already uh do i make sense the staff yeah mm -hmm. yes so a recommendation from the staff is, is i i believe is the best way to go they are always you know like 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 our our mission is supposed to be ending next um next summer or this coming summer so obviously i'll oh, have june, my, june, june, june 2021. 2021 correct mm -hmm. correct yeah our mission is coming to an end so i have the house help i've had from the time we came who i would definitely recommend to any family who is coming into uh into kenya she was also recommended to me by a family who were living at the time we're coming in you see Okay. so it's always good it's always good to get a referral from um the staff so people who are already in the bank and there's always somebody in there who can refer somebody who can help you with the work be it a driver be it a nanny be it a cook be it uh, whoever whatever you want depending on what you want generally how many household help does the average bank household have i think it also depends on uh, the number of children uh how the ages you know my kids were much older when we came so i did need a nanny i just need somebody to help me with the housework in the house so i've i've just mm -hmm. had one you know i i uh where i live our landlord has provided with somebody to do the gardens not at my expense but at the landlord's expense so that is of uh is of us what the only mm -hmm. person we pay is the house help just cleaning and everything i i do my own cooking so i don't need a cook uh i don't need a nanny because my kids were much older so we didn't need a nanny and then we didn't have a car so we didn't need a driver you know but really initially depending also this like i mentioned the sizes uh of your kids you probably need a nanny you probably need a house help so maybe three and then you need a driver 
so maybe three because you have small babies when you have small babies you definitely need a car you know so at least at the most three if your kids are older just house help and maybe a driver too yeah do you li- uh, do the whole house help live with you or do they come daily mine comes daily yeah like uh-huh. i said earlier my ki- my kids are older but i know families who have babies and every home you move to they provide the the cottage for your house help to live in so they don't live with you in the house they have their own separate little cottage where they you know when they get off work they can go and and sleep and rest and come back in the morning just like that so it also depends how comfortable you are if you want them to live with you or you'd rather they go to their home and come back in the morning yeah but for me personally i've had a person who goes and comes back in the morning i see okay thank you we have a question in the chat box and it's uh, the question is i'm interested in hearing about wbgfn uh office is involved in Mm -hmm. any social action uh, charity projects mm-hmm. at present yes okay charity uh there's a charity program that we do we have a school which we help which is run by the international school of kenya which the wb uh the family network uh has been helping with uh in terms of books uh Last time we were trying to get some computers. I'm not too sure what happened. Maybe Kathleen, I don't know if she's even aware of that. But I was speaking to some people in DC. They were trying to donate some computers to the school. So we have a school that we help out. Um, Books, yeah, used books which come in and stuff like that. But we haven't had that activity, any activity of that sort from the time I was here or the time I've been here. So that's how I tried to engage and see if we could try and render some help, and but then it didn't materialize. We were told that we'd get some computers which we would donate to the school, but then nothing has happened yet. Uh, in terms we are so still, that's the, but, uh, we are still working on that uh yeah, so right? far we only got the 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 printers and when we were almost there then lockdown close office and everything stopped very okay. sad <laughs> but we will never All give right. up we will keep trying thank you thank you <laughs> okay and so uh in terms of anything else uh justice no there's been no activity in that aspect at all uh what was the other question i think you answered that it talked about social justice and charity okay. projects so i okay. think I, I think you know you, you you have answered that question so if i if he, if someone was ro- relocating to kenya what okay. would you say in terms of a culture that they really need to know so that they don't uh, upset kenyans Hmm. You know, it's, uh, sometimes there are cultural no we... that you should should not do. Uh... <laughs> you you you, okay. you have said how 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 warm and welcoming and friendly they are, but yes, culturally, you culturally, know, yeah. this is yes, this is going to sound very interesting because you know when we compare Kenya to other African countries like us who are mm-hmm. africans um mm-hmm. kenya are very relaxed on their culture honestly <laughs> mm-hmm. they're very liberal they are extremely extremely Bertha? It's always at the high points that she can't we can't hear her <laughs> yes maureen we can't hear her i know um well, i think i'm starting to say something really good <laughs> <laughs> Baba, are you back hey 
are very liberal, extremely. Um, I think it's because they, they understand their environment. They understand it's a whole world, you know, it's a whole different kind of people who are in Kenya and they just embrace. So culturally, I don't think there's anything really that you can do and step on their toes. No, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen that, honestly. I, I don't know if I have any on top of my mind which I can say that or that. No, they are very, very laid back. Yeah, very laid back. Maybe uh -huh. other than the, other than the Maasai's who still wear the Maasai traditional, they still walk around bare feet. They still have big holes in their ears. And they try and do the olden stuff, but really, they also have their own things that they do. Nothing around, around the normal nature or the urban setup that you would get into and feel. Oh no, I step on their toes. No, I don't think so. Okay, thank you. We have a couple of questions here. Are there yes. are there inter other international groups that WBG spouses can join? Uh, like yes. the UN spouse group, and then yes. uh, is it important to learn Swahili? Uh, not really. Pretty much everybody speaks English here, starting with even, uh, for example, people who are going to work for you in the homes, they speak English, uh, so you can get away with not knowing Swahili. I, I. I struggle. I don't really know Swahili. Um, sometimes people speak, and because you know how it is, you just think yes. this is, this is a black person, so you think they speak it. So that's what we always experience. But we don't know Swahili, no clue. But you once you tell them, oh no, sorry, I'm like a person, and you say, oh sorry, I'm from Zambia, I don't speak Swahili. They'll be like, oh yeah, sorry. Then they'll switch to English. Everywhere you go, in the store, in the hospital, you're getting on a bus everywhere you will not struggle not knowing it but if you want to learn it just as for your own sake that's okay yeah that's okay otherwise you don't necessarily need to learn it you still get by even if you don't know it okay thank you two and, more questions and yeah. then uh, in terms Do of other uh, international organizations yes there's yeah. a un spouse yeah uh un spouse something which been invited to but i never got a chance to attend it the world bank here kind of uh brother uh. Bertha? I, I can attempt to answer this question. Bertha, are you there? Yes, I can hear you now. Oh, good. Two questions. Another two questions is, uh, do you like the food? And mm -hmm. do you need a security guard at home? And if so, does the bank provide it? uh security at home yes the bank recommends what they expect and that that's uh that includes uh so depending on what kind of a setup you have if you have a standalone home uh family home mm -hmm. so the yeah. bank expects you to have security guards uh at the house 24 7 but that's at your expense. That's at the expense of the family. They will recommend which security companies uh, to deal with, but that's going to be at your expense. Uh, they will install security system in the house, uh, which is like, a, uh, what do we call it? The, 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 the alarm system. Yeah, the alarm system where when a panic button, 
when you press the panic button, the security people come in within a certain uh, a certain estimated time. So like where I live, they give us five minutes. We have the actual security people come to the house. That's so that the bank will recommend and then that's at your expense. I live at a, in a, I live in a gated community and I live in, a, they call them compounds. So it's a townhouses, like townhouses in, in a, in an, in a space, you know? So for us, the, the landlord provides the security at the gate. That's not our expense. Uh, they also mm -hmm. provide making sure the surroundings are clean. That's not our expense. That's our landlord's expense. So for us, the only thing we pay for every month is the panic button. So that's a monthly subscription. Whether you use it, whether you don't use it, you still pay for it. So that's what we have. We have a panic button situation. Uh, despite having the security guard at the gate, we still have it in our house. So just in case of anything, you're able to press the, the, the security alarm and then you have the security people come through within five minutes. That's also our expense. Before you uh, rent a house, it used yeah. that the security specialist comes to check that it meets the best yes. standard. Do they still do that? Yes, 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 they still okay. do that, yes. Yes. And then the last question we have, or the question that we have here is, do you like the food? Yes, the food is interesting. Kenya is more uh, Indian oriented. So the food, the food is more curry, curried food. And they eat lots of chapatis and naan breads uh, for the international. For the locals, they eat lots of um, uh, how are we gonna call it? It's 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 made of uh, maize meal. It's a maize meal, and then they it's a starch. Mm -hmm. And then here, there's another question: Are there any water and electricity so shortages? Available, cheap, also fruits, excellent. The last thing we heard, Bertha, before you got fresh up, was awesome. uh, 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 about maize. Yes. And, and then we lost you. So could you go back? Maize and oh, then I, fruit and vegetables. Uh, the starch, they make a starch out of uh, maize meal. Made of maize. Mm -hmm. And then that's like rice. You eat eat it with different food. You eat. <coughs> oh, we can't so, hear you anymore. Unfortunately. You yeah. We can now just. Hello, any luck here? Can you hear uh -huh. me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now I can again. Okay. I will say, uh, in terms of other food, fruits. Fresh fruits from um, the farmers around, they farm a lot. So their fruits are all fresh and very, very affordable. In terms of vegetables, same thing. Everything, it comes in from the farm. So you are sure of fresh fruits, you are sure of fresh vegetables. At any market you go to, at any supermarket, their food is fresh. Yeah. Good, good, good. And the last yeah. question we have here is, are there any water or electricity shortages? Uh, 
One of the bank's recommendation, first of all, the electricity in Kenya is excellent. If there's going to be an interruption or they are working on the, on the network or whatever the, the electricity company is doing, they'll definitely give you a heads up. So the electricity okay. system in Kenya still works perfectly well. But we, I think the bank also has in place to make sure that the house you rent should have a backup system in terms of power. You may have uh, solar panels to help you just in case you have any electricity outrage. Uh, so the homes, usually most of the houses have uh, solar panels just for a backup system. I'm not too sure on the boreholes. Uh, like if you have a borehole when you don't have uh, water and, uh, and, and then the house is able to sustain you in that time. But even when you don't have water, the water company will always let you know way ahead. So you know you are also prepared that in the next 24 hours, you will not have water at all. Yeah. So in that aspect, the, 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 company, the government is still working very well in terms of water, all the necessities rather. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. That's really yes. good to know. Yes, yes. Yeah, especially in the in the residence where you're going to live. Good, good. So one last question then. What is fun and unique about living in Nairobi? What's unique? Fun and unique. Fun and unique. Uh, visiting places is fun. There's a lot to see, uh, a lot of uh, uh, animals to see, a lot of game, uh, game viewing to do. Uh, that's, 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 that's something very fun to see. In terms of your uniqueness, for me, it's the people. It's mm -hmm. the people. Kenyans are unique, you know. They definitely are unique. Kenyans are wonderful. It's 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 just nice and warm to live here. Yeah, it, it, they're welcoming. Yes, they are welcoming. That's good. That's good. Thank you. I think I think with that we're already at nine twelve. So thank you very much, Bertha, for a very informative session. I will ask Pamini to say a few words and uh, discussion. Pamini, thanks so okay. much. I wish I could see you in Mombasa. Um, hi, hi, everybody. And uh, you can turn your cameras on now if you want. Um, Bertha, thank you so much for joining us from Mombasa. And I still remember you when you were here for the last retreat and you were so amazing then and you're still amazing now. Uh, it looks like you're in some beautiful place. So good for you. Thank you. you. Lucky thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for sharing with us, uh, you know, all your experiences and observations about life in Nairobi. Uh, I think you don't realize it, but those little things that you say are so valuable. You know, for example, you just said that electricity is not an issue uh, there. And I think that's, that's a very good uh, piece of information, which is valuable to families. And not just that, but many of the other things that you talked about today, including and especially that the people are very friendly and unique and um, that is something you definitely enjoy about the place. So having said that, I would like to thank all of those uh, who joined us today. And, um, and I hope that you join us uh, when we resume our uh, sessions in the new season. Oh, no, no, we have one. Hey, Pamini, not My yet. apologies, my apologies. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. Um, um, so I will actually leave the last word to Sarah and thank you again, Bertha. My pleasure, thank, my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bertha. It was just so informative.
Uh, you went through, you know, so many different details of how life is over there. I personally love the fact that there were fresh fruit and vegetables available all the time. So you're very, very lucky and fortunate <laughs> to be enjoying those. Um, so it seems that you're, uh, you know, you're having a good time and your family uh, is, is enjoying being there as well. So that's, uh, you know, quite a positive aspect into uh, your life and your experience. And uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us, being here uh, with us. As always, it's such a pleasure uh, having, you know, a large group of people listening in and interacting. So until uh, next week, goodbye and uh, hope to see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you.